Hi guys, welcome back to a case of econ struggles. Today we're going to start talking about causal methods. And the way I want to introduce causal methods is by talking about why correlation is not equal to causation. One of the reasons we have these fancy tricks in econometrics, so like IV or difference of difference, is because we have correlation in the data and we want to prove why some of those correlations are causations. And in order to do that, we need to understand why correlation could not be equal to causation. Timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's go ahead and get right into it. So here are the three ways that two variables could be correlated. It could be reverse causation, so x could cause y, but y could also cause x at the same time, which is bad. There could be a confounder, so x could cause y, but z could also be causing x and y. It could also be that correlation implies causation, and we just have this nice picture where x implies y. It could also be the case that x causes y, but there's some other variable z that causes y through x. So even though there's this other variable w that causes x and y, we have this variation in z that's also super helpful for causation. And again, these are just the three main ways two variables could be correlated, where one and two are sort of bad and we're trying to get away from that. And if we have three, then we're in a good situation and we can show that correlation is indeed causation. What are some of the methods we're gonna talk about to show that correlation could be causation? Well, we could do some randomized control trials because that would indicate that X just causes Y because we've controlled everything. If we have these confounders W, we could use something like OLS or regression, selection on observables. We'll talk about difference of differences. We'll talk about instrumental variables, which pertains to that case where Z causes Y through X. And we can also do something called regression discontinuity design or RDD where z causes y through x, so we use this relationship to estimate the causal impact of x on y. As we go through each of these methods, we'll talk intuitively about what they do. We'll use some arrow diagrams like you see here, and we'll also use some very basic numerical examples so you guys can get the idea of what's happening. So if you'd like to learn more about these causal methods, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.